Hello everyone, this is Sandeep here from Physics HQ. Continuing with the lecture series of solving MCQs and sums from 12th Physics textbook Maharashtra State Board with new syllabus from 2020. In this video, we will be covering MCQs of Chapter 3 Kinetic Theory of Gases and Radiation. Let us start. In an ideal gas, the molecules possess only kinetic energy, both kinetic and potential energy, only potential energy, neither kinetic nor potential energy. So let me tell you, a molecule of an ideal gas is an ideal particle which has only mass and velocity. Therefore, with velocity, we have kinetic energy because kinetic energy ka formula is half mv square therefore the particle has only kinetic energy the mean free path lambda of molecules is given by so these are the options now the formula for lambda is given as 1 upon root of 2 pi d square capital n by v now this capital n by v is nothing but number of molecules in a volume in a given volume so this can be denoted by small n so this becomes density and we can rewrite the formula as 1 upon root of 2 pi d square n so our correct option is option c if pressure of an ideal gas is decreased by 10% isothermally then its volume will decrease by 9% increase by 9% decrease by 10% or increase by 11.11% .11%. so first of all we'll understand what is the meaning of isothermal process in isothermal process temperature is kept constant okay next to understand the change in pressure and volume we will go to the ideal gas equation which is given by PV is equal to NRT P stands for pressure, V for volume, T for temperature N is number of moles of a gas which will be fixed for a given gas and R is universal gas constant so these two terms are already constant and for our given sum T is also constant so what we can say is product of pressure and volume is constant now over here if by chance pressure increases to keep the product constant the volume will go down so that the final product is again the same number likewise if pressure will decrease the volume has to go up so that the product remain constant over here and this is what is happening in our case so in our case in this question there is a decrease in pressure so if pressure will decrease the volume has to increase so we got two options matching with us of increase right so let us go ahead and find out the increase in the volume for that we can write p2 v2 is equal to p1 v1 so p2 v2 is new pressure and volume p1 v1 is old pressure and volume over here we can write it as v2 upon v1 this is equal to p1 upon p2 now let us discuss about the relation between P1 and P2. Since P2 has decreased 10%, so it is only 90% of P1 now. Okay, 90% is nothing but 90 upon 100 of P1. So we can write P2 is nothing but 0.9 P1. And if we write this in ratio form what we get is p1 upon p2 is 1 upon 0.9 so let us put it over here so what we get is 1 upon 0.9 which we can write as 10 upon 9 so we will get v2 upon v1 is equal to 1.111 recurring now this is the ratio of volume but we are supposed to find increase and decrease so to find increase we need to find the change in volume divided by original volume so the change will be given by v2 minus v1 upon the original volume v1 
So if you see what we have done is we have subtracted V1 in numerator. So what we'll do is we will apply the same thing on the right hand side. So you have 1.111 minus 1 divided by 1. Once we solve this, we will get 0.1111. Now this is the uh, change in volume. When we convert this into percentage, this will become 11.11 percentage. So our correct option is option D. So in this question, they have given if A is equal to 0.72, R is equal to 0.24, then value of T is and these are the option let us try and understand the question first the formula that we will use is a plus r plus t this is equal to 1 and from this we can calculate t is equal to 1 minus a minus r so we got 1 minus a is given as 0 0.72 r is 0 0.24 so we can add this up this will become 0 0.96 and when we subtract it we get 0 0.04 so t is 0 0.04 option is b let us first understand what is a r and t over here a is nothing but coefficient of absorption r is nothing but coefficient of reflection And finally, T is nothing but coefficient of transmission. Okay. To understand this, let us say we have a surface or a medium. Now, whenever a wave will be incident on this, there will be some part of the wave which will be reflected back. There will be some part of the wave which will be absorbed by this body and last some portion of this wave which will be transmitted through this medium so how much portion is absorbed is denoted by a in our case uh, it is 0 0.72 means 70 percent of the incident radiation is absorbed over here r is 0 0.24 which means that 24 percent is getting reflected and finally t that we calculated is 4 percent and it tells that 4% of this radiation is being transmitted through this medium okay so let us go ahead the ratio of emissive power of a perfectly black body at 1327 and 527 degree celsius is 4 is to 1 16 is to 1 2 is to 1 or 8 is to 1 so first of all we'll find the emissive power ka formula the formula for emissive power is given as p is equal to sigma a t raised to 4 so p over here is emissive power or radiant power sigma is nothing but stephens constant a is area of the black body and t is the temperature for a given black body area will also be fixed and sigma will also be fixed we can write it as p is directly proportional to t raised to 4 so we can have P1 upon P2 is equal to T1 upon T2 raised to 4. Now T1 over here is 1327 degree Celsius. We will convert this into Kelvin by adding with 273. So this will become this will become 1600 Kelvin. And similarly for T2. 527 degree celsius will become 800 kelvin therefore we have p1 by p2 is equal to 1600 by 800 raised to 4 which will give us 2 upon 1 raised to 4 which will be 2 raised to 4 is nothing but 16 so we got 16 is to 1 as the answer that's it from this video. If you find this video useful, don't forget to share it with your classmates and friends. This is Sandeep Pierre from Physics HQ signing off.